Good afternoon, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your Market on Close report for Thursday, November 5th. Okay, another nice day in the markets today. Broad advance. Let's get started. We had a, a down bar yesterday into the close, and then we gapped higher this morning up above this 349.50 area. And we made a little progress during the day, but not a whole lot. Um, and really, during this advance, you can see a lot of the gains have been overnight on the gap up. So if you've been holding, you know, overnight, you've participated in, in a lot of, I mean, most of the gains. And if you were, clo you know, closing out at the end of the day, then, of course, you didn't capture that so th that's always a tough call and that's more or less you know reliant on your process on if you're you know swinging for uh you know a multi-day advance versus you know trying to capture more shorter term time frames and intraday kind of stuff so uh this has been a a very nice advance but notice here i haven't got the trend line uh uh, developed here on the RSI, but you'll want to pencil in a trend line here on RSI and watch for a curl over of your PPO momentum. And then when you get, or if, you know, if, when, I mean, it'll come eventually, you know, a high level bear cross coupled with a trend line break on RSI that will be your signal that a likely trend change is uh, afoot. And one thing I wanted to point out to you is how, you know, using the RSI and the PPO together with your price signals can be very helpful. Uh, let me show you. Had a trend line on RSI following PPO. Trend line break on RSI, PPO high level bear cross resulted in, you know, a pronounced downtrend. Downtrend line, PPO, PPO bull cross, RSI breakout, trend breakout resulted in a nice advance. So that's why I like these two indicators. They line up really well and give you, you know, somewhat of an early heads up on what's about to occur. Not 100% perfect, but nothing is. Um, but when you get alignment between, you know, an RSI breakout, a PPO bull cross, and a break of trend, then you got something you can uh, really lean on. 30 minute chart of SPY. Um, I've penciled in a, a fairly well defined uptrend channel showing all these gaps below. If you are long, you can stay long against 349, which is the top of this gap and defined here at the bottom of the channel and on any break of 349 break of the channel into the gap you're going to want to get short and look for a gap fill all the way back down to 344 so that would be a fantastic uh trade to capture when and if uh this uh were to ever break cues Again, same idea, even steeper advance than uh, SPY. I mean, it's kind of hard to put a vertical trend line on that, but I mean, that's basically what we've got. And you can see the last couple of days, you know, after the, especially today after the gap up, it held its ground but made no intraday progress. And we'll see on the FANG names that there were very limited uh, intraday trading opportunities uh, as it just, you know, oscillated above support here at 293. Here's the 
30 minute chart. I've put in a uh, an uptrend channel with a midpoint line. We've got a uh, the gap opening here. And so you can stay long above the gap. And even if it comes back down here and then bounces, you're fine. But any gap entry here, uh, you're going to want to get short because first stop will be 289.50 right here at the bottom of the channel. And if that were to break, the gap will be filled down to uh, 287. And that's, I mean, that's a $5 move. So that's something you're going to want to, uh, you know, capture if you're an active trader. IWM, nice move. We got, um, uh, I don't have the, the gap in here, but you can see that it gapped up from 160.50 to up here in the 161s. But then you had, you had a buying opportunity here. If you weren't already long, you had a buying opportunity at 163 on the fill of the gap. And then another buying opportunity on the breakout of uh, 164 and you'll recall that our target now is 167.50 and that goes way back uh, <clears throat> to a prior high and I you know I, I like this I like this setup looking at the 30 minute chart got the uptrend channel and I've penciled in a midpoint I think anything above 164 is a long and we're looking up here uh, it's off the scale but 167.50 is our target and uh you know there were a lot of lot of nice moves today in uh in some of the value names you know off the beaten path that we haven't really been tracking very closely but it's all reflective in you know in the iwm index so um you know, this has broken out above that 164, which has capped it for quite a while. And now we're above. So as long as 164 can hold, I really like it long. Facebook uh, gap up and then came back for a uh, back test of yesterday's high. And if you if you caught that this morning, that was a that was a nice entry for you and, and kudos to you if you were uh, focused in on that right at the open. You got a nice entry on the back test of yesterday's high and then you could have stayed long against that and you got a push up to this 297 level. Yeah, 297.38 was the high and you can see that multiple candles have tried to punch through that today and it stalled so you know if you were an active trader and uh you wanted to take a shot that was you know you could have initiated a, a an objective short at that level and said hey you know if it hasn't gotten through in five hours what are the chances that it's you know going to get through now and you could have uh, initiated a a short against the high and then you would have gotten you know a little bit of follow through i mean the market's strong so that trade while objective you know it's not a promise that it's going to work all i'm pointing out is you had a very objective level there now in the days going forward notice that PPO is at a high level and starting to curl over and you might see, you know, a FIB retracement back into this, uh, you know, 290 area or even all the way back to 284, but the chart would still be bullish, you know, breakout back test and then higher. So if you missed all this and you got a pullback to 284 at this prior high, that would be a nice objective, low risk, 
long entry with a stop just below. Apple uh, really didn't really didn't do much after the you know the initial pop, but it did hold 118. So if you were if you were playing for you know a longer term play, you can stay long against 118 and uh, you know exit your position on any break below because then the top of the gap here at 117 would be your first target and then a gap fill uh, to 115 would be your you know your gap fill target. And I think longer term, if you were to get this back test of 115 and fill this gap, I think that would be a great entry for a uh, longer term trade uh, if that were to hold. You can set your stop just below and then, you know, try to swing that for a move higher and hopefully, you know, reaccelerate and pop through this uh, 120 level. Tesla had a nice day, some, some nice technical action. It had consolidated here between 430 and 420. It uh, gapped higher in the morning, had a reach back candle that if you wanted to get long, you cer certainly could have, but the real trade was on the break above 430. That was a level that we had you know, identified forever. And then you got a nice push up to the mid, you know, 437, 438 area. Came back to touch 430. So anybody that missed that bite of the apple the first time, you got a second bite here on the back touch of 430, giving you every opportunity to be long if you wanted to be long. And then had a nice uh, closing couple of hours. Uh, I still think the target is 450. I think you stay long against 430 and uh, look for that run higher. Any any uh, break below 430, you'll see that it would you know break the channel as well. And then, of course, you've got to exit your longs on any uh, move back below 430, and probably going to come back to test 420 yet again. Microsoft, very much the same as some of the other charts that we've looked at. If you weren't in it, you, you missed the gap higher and then very little, you know, action to speak of uh, after the open. Uh, as long as it holds this uh, 321.50 level, it remains along, but any of the you know, any break below, then you're back in the gap and coming back to back test this uh, 317 level. So very, you know, gap, gappy action, a lot of holes been below, but that doesn't mean that, you know, it can't push higher. And we've got a, uh, I don't have it marked in here, but, you know, we're near this prior high. Any breakout here would open up the door to uh, 230 and then potentially 235, which I think was uh, the all time high. Amazon, uh, same thing, really. Uh, there was a gap higher, but then notice there was a reach back candle to this 3285 that uh, was a prior high. If uh, if you were a sharpshooter and, and targeting that, that was an objective long there. And then you you got uh, you got a uh, basically a fifty dollar push higher up to this three thirty five uh, thirty three thirty five level, which has been a a uh, long standing level. And then it just oscillated the rest of the day, a little weakness into the close. But so now. Tomorrow, assuming it doesn't gap up, if if price comes back to this 280, uh, 3285 and holds, 
you can take that long. If it breaks above 33.35, that would be a place to add or get long and then look for 3400. But on any break below this 3285, you're in the gap and you're looking for a, a fill back to uh, 3250. Google finally starting to consolidate. I've boxed in the area between 1780 and 1740. So you've got a $40 consolidation range uh, to work with. Any pullback to the low end of the range that holds is a good buy with a stop just below looking for a push back up to 1780. If you get a break above 1780, you know, in the regular session, that would be a buy. But if it, if it lost 1740, you're into a price void here, well, you'll probably come back to 1700 rather quickly. And if that were to fail, then you're all the way back to uh, 1650 on this big uh, gap fill. So um, it's nice that this is consolidating because if you're interested in trading it, now you're starting to get some levels that you can, you know, really count on and, and uh, uh, use as your lines to shoot against. Uh, Netflix had a really nice day, a really nice trading op. If you were, you know, dialed in on it, yes, there was the gap up, but notice a reach back candle to a key level at 505, even a little bit below, gave you every opportunity uh, to get long at 505, and then you got a nice push up to the uh, 518s. Little weakness into the close, but now you're you're solidly in the gap. I think you stay long and look for a a gap fill up to 525, and then if everything stays productive, a break above 525, then you're then you're looking at 535, 545, and then 555 if things get nuts. Um, your exit point uh, along the way is it's got to hold. You want it to hold this channel here at 510, but definitely any break back below 505 would make it look like a fake breakout uh, that did not stick, and then you're back in the weeds. Uh, below 505, you know, in this gap, and then 495, and then, like I said, you're you're back in the weeds on a fake breakout. Uh, moving on to the solar sector, a lot of big moves in solar today. Uh, fake breakdown came down to reach the uh, 50, and then gapped above. If you were sharpen on the draw. Uh, you could have bought that open, but it ran fast. So now we're keying off of this uh, 7755. Any kind of pullback here would be a great opportunity and, and more or less a gift, if you will, on uh, TAN. Um, I was I was hoping to get that. You know, hindsight's 2020. Should have bought it yesterday, but you know. Who could count on a on a gap up? So now we just have to look for an objective entry. XRT, nice day. You can be long against 53, looking for a move to test the prior high at 55 and then uh, higher. You can see that uh, PPO is uh, resetting right at the zero line. That's a, a very bullish uh, setup when you get, you know, the uh, resets at the zero line and curling up. Uh, housing didn't do anything today, uh, relatively flat. Um, we had talked about Bitcoin. Hopefully you got long if you wanted to be long because now there's a free path up to, you know, the prior highs and beyond if it wants to go there. But here's your big breakout on the weekly. We had identified it down here at 
uh, 14. If you didn't take it here, you had a chance here. Um, if you're interested now, I mean, you just gotta ha you just gotta pick your spot. If you you know just you have more risk now, of course, on a pullback to uh, 16. But um, you know, if you get that, grab it. If not, and you want to be long, you just have to give it a wider stop. Any weekly close below uh, 16 would make that look like a you know a failed breakout. So I think anything north of 16 is you know, green light for higher prices certainly has, um, you know, the momentum breaking higher. Uh, RSI breaking above 70 and that and that you'll read in the textbooks, you know, RSI over 70 means it's overbought. I, I don't pay any attention to that because overbought can stay overbought for weeks or even longer. Um, what you want to be concerned with once you cross above 70 is a trend line break of RSI or then dropping back below 70. Those are your warning flags. Uh, key site. We had flagged this in a video, uh, in a blog post a couple weeks ago. Got the breakout today above 110. And notice this is a weekly chart, much more important than you know a uh, you know a daily chart pop above. The stage is set now for a big advance as long as price can hold this 110. Now I will point out that earnings are November 18th. A couple ways to play: you could you could buy November calls. Um, that expire on November 20th. So you would have the opportunity for a two week run into earnings. And then you can pull the rip cord, you know, the day of earnings if you get that push. Um, uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, if, if this thing's for real, it may just run into earnings. And, you know, you may be up here you know, whatever, I don't even want to say how high it could go on a run into earnings if, uh, you know, if all the stars align, but you've got a definite level here at 110. Any, any break back below, you've got to exit your position. Uh, and remember, this is a weekly chart. So tomorrow, if it went down to 109, that doesn't mean that, you know, it failed. It just means that, you know, all that matters are the weekly closes. So where it closes tomorrow will be, you know, the official breakout long signal because this, this candle doesn't finalize until tomorrow. So you can decide how you want to play that. Um, I don't have a position yet, but I, I really, I mean, you got to love this chart. Uh, consolidation for over a year under 110 and now it's making a move out on a big ascending triangle you could easily project a a um, a measured move target you know 150 dollars or even higher so um that's a good one to pay attention to gold a little bit disgusted on this one uh just missed it uh, nothing else you can say notice that it came up and stopped after it filled this gap from way before so right now anything over 183 is a buy just just buy it i think as long as the dollar is going down um it's going to be a tailwind and I, I will do a separate thing on gold I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it right now but watch the watch the um, euro US dollar pair and if you get a breakout above 120 on that gold is going to explode and it's been testing that downtrend line if you remember that chart that we posted um, uh, multiple times on the uh, 
euro us dollar pair that's the key level and if that pair breaks out euro going higher dollar going lower that's going to be a massive tailwind for gold where you could see you know 50 hundred dollar moves on a daily basis and we want to be on board for that this is just getting started in my view so while you know it would have been great to capture you know bought at the low here or or bought before the gap up that's hindsight if this thing is going to go i mean 183 is just getting going uh we can look for moves into the 190s and even uh 200 and above after this long 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 four or five month consolidation here where it hasn't done anything it has gathered or regenerated a lot of energy in the uh, you know in this consolidation phase uh, and I, I will take a closer look at it uh, in the next day or so and uh, you know try and pencil in some measured moves that we can look forward to if in fact we get the uh, big breakout and uh, that uh, euro US dollar pair breaks out as well that will be a big tailwind so we want to be on board for that okay uh let's wrap it up for today um oh one thing i wanted to mention i sent out a note uh at the close of the day on this rip remember to roll and protect your gains what do i mean by that you know if you're anchored at a, at a strike and you know this multi-day advance has has put those strikes deep into the money or given you you know a double whatever it may be you've got to get paid you got to roll that up you got to take that money to the bank um, recalibrate your exposure move your strikes up to even money and stay long as long as the you know the bull phase of the advance is going because you don't want to you don't want to just hang out with a bunch of positions with deep embedded gains we are still in the post-election period i know it doesn't seem like it you know you know it feels like the all clear you know pile in long but anything can still happen uh that would that would hold for you know any random week in the summertime when you got deep embedded gains i like to roll that higher i like to have a trade plan that includes getting paid uh it does no good to say oh wow i was you know i had a nice gain and they took it all back don't give them that opportunity if you roll to even money your money is in the bank they can't take it back because you already got it so be cautious of you know paper gains on um, deep in the money options roll that crap up and and uh, take it to the bank and then if they decide to pull it back you can close out your at the money calls and not lose hardly uh, any money at all certainly not as much as you would if you were at lower strikes after they decide to pull it back so anyways uh let's wrap it up there if you're new to the channel and you like the content please hit the subscribe button and the alarm bell that'll get you uh notified of all the new content coming your way uh, over in the show notes are links to the blog site. I encourage you to visit that. There's a lot of helpful articles there and trading psychology and trade school, bunch of stuff, and also a link to register for my content. And you can join the team. We'd love to have you. You'll get uh, not only an email every time, you know, intraday and anytime I publish information, you'll get a convenient email uh, sent to you and also an invitation to the trading room where we'd uh, certainly love to have you join our community and uh, 
have you partic participate or even just watch and uh, review the trade ideas and the conversation at your convenience. A lot of people do that. So uh, have a good evening. We'll see how long this run can continue. And we'll pick it up first thing tomorrow morning like we always do. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Enjoy the rest of your evening and talk to you next time.